Canada is the best country in the world, right? I mean, we got that sweet, sweet maple syrup. Whoa, look at that price. Pretty expensive, maybe not so cool anymore. Okay, okay, but at least we got that poutine, right? Wait, 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 wait. That's too expensive. Now what? Now the reality is consumer goods and just keeping your head above water is getting a lot harder for the general people in Canada. So what's left to do? How can we get out of this mess? I'm gonna break it down in this video. So we now have 5.9 million new people using food banks all across the country. Now, something that the data really isn't showing is how many of those people are new immigrants coming to this country. And the answer is probably a decent amount. I mean, we don't have the exact data because Canada does like to share its data. We talk about that on this channel all the time. Canada's hush hush with everything about their criminal data, their policy data, their monetary policy data. They don't like to share what they don't have to. But anecdotally, and what you're seeing in articles, is a lot of people coming to this country who were promised a great life to live the Canadian dream, to even own your own home. By the time they get here and they get settled, they realize that was a huge lie. This country is not affordable. Food is very expensive. Now, the next thing that's causing such an uptick in food bank usage is our unemployment rate is almost where it was at pre-pandemic levels. But the difference is, even at that same unemployment rate, there's way more food bank usage. Remember, all this unemployment data, the CPI data, inflation data, it's all lag. So what's happening today isn't going to show up in the reports for another three to four months. And again, if you follow this channel where we dive into the articles, we peel the onions on the live data, we know where this is heading. Unemployment is going much higher than it is right now. Inflation is going to roll over like a rock. Interest rates are going to be forced to be cut in the next couple of months by the sounds of it. So we know where the Canadian economy is going and it's going to a recession. And while we were hoping for that soft landing, it's looking more like it's going to be a mild recession, maybe even slightly more than mild recession. Now, it's not anticipated to have this sweeping 2008 Armageddon because the government is going to cut rates, like I said, very, very soon. And that's going to stimulate, stimulate. So we're probably going to just near miss a giant Armageddon. We're just going to kick the can down the road. Yes, we're going to push that federal debt for another day to deal with. Inflation's probably going to rise again because we're going to stimulate and print money like crazy. Ah, we'll deal with that probably in like 2027, 2028. We'll deal with it then. So maybe then we're going to have the Armageddon. We'll see. But it's not really going to happen right now. But it's still not looking good. Now, dark times are coming, economically speaking. I speak about this all the time of how we just recently had the real estate recession, but very likely how that's over. And it's going to be printing time all over again cutting rates real estate market's going to go back up again very very quick but the economic recession we're in right now but it's still coming over the next couple of months and this is the thing that most people don't understand is that if you have a weak economy a recession in the economy that it must have a real estate recession at the same time and that's not the case in fact most times when we have a recession the real estate industry and the economic industry have their recessions at different times. Very rarely do they happen at the same time. The only recent time where that happened obviously was 2008 and that was way more true for the US. It wasn't even true for Canada. The real estate market just kind of kept doing its thing. I remember because that's when I got into real estate was in 2010, right in the middle of it. And the real estate market in Canada didn't really care, barely had a sneeze. It just kept doing its little boring thing, 3%, 5% appreciation every year, do 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 while economically, we were slowing down because the US was so slow. That is what I think is gonna happen again. That's what all the data is pointing to. The real estate recession, guys, sorry, it already happened. You missed the deal time. In fact, the time I'm making this video, I'm making it at the end of November. This is the last time to go out and get your screaming deals because come this spring, it's gonna be going back up again. And come spring 2025, we're gonna be back in 2020 pandemic style madness again. I can almost guarantee it. But economically speaking, we're in for a rough ride about to come. So what do you do? This channel's all about solutions, not curling up in a ball, not providing doomsday news like some pussy finance YouTube boy who's never done anything, never owned a business. You're dealing here with a real real estate investing entrepreneur. I bought and sold 150 properties. I got 13 employees at the time of filming this video. And I've raised over $60 million from total strangers who believe in me and wanted to invest with me. So I know how to run a business. I'm a pretty wealthy guy and I got some solutions for you. Number one, you can't rely on a job. You got to stop this wagey lifestyle where you just work for a wage, a salary, you clock in, you clock out, you get your hours. It's so unsafe. I know it seems safe and we're told about security and job security. Dude, being an employee is one of the least fucking secure things you can do. You have no idea 
when you're going to get canned next. You have no idea what's going on with the business internally. You're just some guy working in, doing your spreadsheets. You have no fucking idea what's coming. That's bad. I want you guys to take control of your life and start investing, start buying some real estate, start buying some S&P 500 stock and just getting ready for your retirement, getting ready for life. And that's what this channel is entirely dedicated to. I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos on here explaining how to invest in real estate, how to invest in stocks. If you wanna take it one step further, I got courses in the description below, some free, some cost money, but it's going to dramatically speed up your success on how you grow a business, how you take control of your life. Because here's the thing, dude, Trudeau isn't gonna save you. Even Pierre Polyev isn't gonna save you. These guys aren't gonna help you put more money into your wallet and actually help your life. The only person that can do that is you. So if you want to find out more about how to do that, I post videos daily here on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram as well. And again, check out all those sweet courses below. Some free, some cost money. I'll see you in the next video where we can learn how to kick some more ass. See you then.